Hello students, welcome back to my first video on chapter 10 S block elements. In this video, I will explain about S block elements, about their general physical and chemical properties and about their uses. So, shall we now move into the chapter? What are S block elements? Elements in which the last electron enters the outermost S orbital are called S block elements. Okay, S block consists of two groups. They are group 1 and group 2. And we know each orbital can accommodate only a maximum of two electrons, right? You should have learnt about this uh, in chapter 2, structure of atom. Remember, so uh, there are only two groups under S block. Why? This is because an S orbital can accommodate only a maximum of two electrons. So, those elements in which only one electron enters the outermost S orbital are called group 1 elements and those elements in which the last electron enters the outermost half filled S orbital are called group 2 elements. Clear? So, group 1 elements are called alkali metals and group 2 elements are called alkaline earth metals. Shall we compare and learn about alkali and alkaline earth metals? The elements lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium and francium form group 1 of the periodic table. The elements beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium and radium form group 2 of the periodic table. Now, elements of group 1 are commonly known as alkali metals. Why? Because they form hydroxides. Okay, they form hydroxides when they react with water. And the hydroxides formed by these uh, elements on reaction with water are strongly alkaline in nature. Okay, that is why they are called alkali metals. Now, why are group 2 elements called alkaline earth metals? They are commonly known as alkaline earth metals because their oxides and hydroxides are alkaline in nature and their metal oxides are found in the earth's crust. Okay, we call all elements belonging to group 2 as alkaline earth metals except beryllium. Okay, except beryllium, all elements uh, belonging to group 2 are otherwise called alkaline earth metals. Clear? Now, let us look at the occurrence of alkali and alkaline earth metals. Among alkali metals, sodium and potassium are abundant and lithium, rubidium and cesium have much lower abundances. Francium is highly radioactive. 223 francium. This is the longest lived isotope that has a half-life of only 21 minutes. Okay, now uh, moving on to the occurrence of alkaline earth metals. Among alkaline earth metals, calcium and magnesium are abundant. Okay, while calcium is the fifth most abundant element in the earth's crust, magnesium is the sixth most abundant element in the earth's crust. Strontium and barium have much lower abundance. Beryllium is very rarely found. Radium is the rarest of alkaline earth metals comprising only 10 raised to minus 10 percentage of igneous rocks. What do you mean by igneous rocks? It is a type of rock that is formed from magma that has cooled and hardened. Okay, so ra radium is the rarest of all alkaline earth metals. What about the electronic configuration of alkali and alkaline earth metals? Let's see. All alkali metals have only one S electron in their valence shell outside the noble gas core. All alkaline earth metals have two S electrons in their valence shell outside the noble gas core. The general outer electronic configuration of alkali metals is NS1 where N can be 2 to 7. The general outer electronic configuration of alkaline earth metals is NS2 where N can be 2 to 7. Since all alkali metals have similar valence shell or in other words similar outer electronic configuration, they exhibit similar physical and chemical properties. Similar is the case with alkaline earth metals. Since all alkaline earth metals have similar outer electronic configuration, they exhibit similar physical and chemical properties. Now look at alkali metals. All alkali metals Okay, they are the most electropositive metals in the whole of the periodic table. Why? The loosely held S electron in the outermost valence shell of these elements makes them the most uh, electropositive metals. 
Remember, when I taught you chapter 3, I told you this. That is, all elements except noble gases, they are in a race to achieve uh, octet configuration in their valence shell in order to achieve stability. Okay, all elements are in a race to achieve 8 electrons in their valence shell. This they do either by losing electrons, by sharing electrons or by gaining electrons. Now, if you look at alkali metals, uh, they have only one S electron in their valence shell outside the noble gas core. So, if these uh, elements lost this single uh, valence electron, they would readily achieve what? They would readily achieve octet configuration. Okay, so uh, alkali metals, uh, the atoms of alkali metal show greater tendency to lose their outermost valence shell. And this you have learned previously that when an atom loses an electron, what happens to it? It gains a positive charge. It becomes a cation. Okay, since alkali metals readily lose electron, they form unipositive metal cations. Okay, that is why you write like this, M plus ions. Clear? Hence, alkali metals are never found freely in nature and they form compounds which are predominantly ionic. Similarly, alkaline earth metals also form compounds which are predominantly ionic in character. The first table tells you about the electronic configuration of alkali metals. The general outer electronic configuration of alkali metals is NS1. See, you can find that there is only one S electron in the outermost valence shell of each of these elements. And you can also see that the value of N, that is principal quantum number, changes or increases from 2 to 7 as you go down this group. Okay. And since all these elements have similar uh, outer electronic configuration, they exhibit similar physical and chemical properties. Okay, now look at the second table and it tells you about the electronic configuration of alkaline earth metals. Here you can see that there are two electrons, S electrons in the outermost valence shell of each of these elements. And here also the principal quantum number N increases from 2 to 7 as you go down the group. Okay, since all these elements have similar outer electronic configuration, they all exhibit similar physical and chemical properties. Let us now compare the atomic and ionic radii of alkali and alkaline earth metals across the period and down the group. The atomic and ionic radii of alkali metals are the largest in any given period. See, lithium is an alkali metal. Its atomic radius is the largest in this period. Note that the ionic radii of alkali metal cations are smaller than the parent atom. For example, if you look at lithium ion, its ionic radius is just 0.68 which is very small than the atomic radius of lithium atom which is 1.52. Clear? On moving down the group, the atomic and ionic radii of alkali metals increase with increase in atomic number as we move from lithium to francium because in, with e, every succeeding element, a newer shell is added. Okay, as a result, the atomic size increases. So, the atomic and ionic radii of alkali metals increase on move, moving down the group from lithium to francium. Okay, now what about alkaline earth metals? Across the period, the atomic and ionic radii of alkaline earth metals are smaller than those of the corresponding alkali metals in the same period. Why? Because we know uh, uh, as the atomic number increases, nuclear charge increases. The number of protons inside the nucleus increases with increase in atomic number. As a result, the uh, electrons in the outermost shell will experience greater force of attraction from the nucleus. As a result, the atomic size would shrink. Okay, the atomic radius would decrease as we move across the period. Okay, uh, as a result, the atomic and ionic radii of alkaline earth metals are smaller than those of the corresponding alkali metals in each period. On moving down the group, the atomic and ionic radii of alkaline earth metals increase with increase in atomic number as we move down the group from beryllium to radium. This is because of the addition of a newer shell with each succeeding element on moving down the group. Clear? So, the atomic size increases. As a result, the atomic and ionic radii of alkaline earth metals uh, increase with increase in atomic number on moving down the group. 
Now, uh, let us learn about ionization enthalpies of alkali and alkaline earth metals. Across the period, alkali metals have the lowest ionization enthalpies in each period. Clear? They have the lowest ionization enthalpies in each period. Now, alkaline earth metals. If you look at alkaline earth metals, their ionization enthalpies are greater than those of the corresponding elements of group 1. Ionization enthalpy of alkali metals decrease as we move down the group. This is because the outermost S electron that is to be removed becomes farther and farther away from the nucleus with the addition of a new shell with each succeeding element. Okay. Due to this, there is an increase in the number of inner shells. Okay, if the number of inner shells increases, the number of inner electrons also increases, which uh, leads to uh, an effective screening uh, of the outermost electron from the attractive force of the nucleus. As a result, the attraction of the nucleus for the valence S electron decreases. As a result, it is easier to remove the outermost S electron by supplying very less amount of energy. Okay, hence ionization enthalpy decreases as we move down the group uh, of alkali metals from lithium to francium. Now what about alkaline earth metals? Ionization enthalpy of alkaline earth metals also decrease as we move down the group. Explanation is the same. Why? The S electron that is to be removed is far and far away from the nucleus. Uh, due to the addition of a new shell with each succeeding element. Okay, as a result, there is an increase in the number of inner shells which leads to an increase in the screening effect. With the increase in the screening effect, the attraction of the nucleus for the valence S electron decreases and so it becomes easier to remove the loosely held valence electrons by supplying less amount of energy. Hence, ionization enthalpies decrease as we go down the group from beryllium to radium. Now, an important point to remember here is that the first ionization enthalpy of alkali metals are the lowest in each period. The first ionization enthalpy of alkaline earth metals are greater than those of the corresponding alkali metals in each period. The first ionization enthalpy of alkali metals is the lowest in each period. This is because the noble gas core shields the single S electron in the valence shell from the direct attraction of the positive charge on the atomic nucleus. Simply saying, uh, the electrons which are present in between the positively charged nucleus and the outermost S electron shields the outermost S electron from the attractive force of the nucleus. As a result, the valence electron is loosely held by the nucleus and so it can be easily removed by supplying only a small amount of energy. That is why the first ionization enthalpy of alkali metals is the lowest in each period. Now, uh, if you look at alkaline earth metals, they have comparatively smaller size than alkali metals. Also, they have higher nuclear charge when compared to the alkali metals in each period. Okay, why? As we move across a period, the nuclear charge increases resulting in a decrease in the atomic size that is the valence electrons are more and more tightly held by the nucleus due to the increase in the nuclear charge as we move from left to right across a period. Consequently, more and more energy is needed to remove this tightly held electron uh, and hence ionization enthalpies keep on increasing. So, uh, the second point that is to be remembered is the second ionization enthalpy of alkali metals are very high whereas the second ionization enthalpy of alkaline earth metals are smaller than those of the corresponding alkali metals in each period. Okay, why? Let's see the explanation. The second electron in alkali metals, for example, sodium has to be removed from a cation that is Na plus ion which has already acquired the stable noble gas configuration of neon. We already know that it requires very high amount of energy to remove an electron from a species that, is, that has already achieved the stable noble gas configuration. So, removal of a second electron from Na plus ion would require very high amount of energy. Okay, so uh, on generalizing, removal of a second electron in alkali metals requires very high energy. Similarly, removal of a second electron from alkaline earth metals, for example, magnesium here has to be done from a cation that is Mg plus ion, which is yet to acquire the stable noble gas configuration. 
Okay, uh, Mg plus would be uh, uh, would show a greater tendency to remove its uh, outermost electron so that it would acquire the stable noble gas configuration of neon. Okay, so removal of a second electron in Mg plus ion requires much less energy. Okay, so on generalizing, removal of a second electron in alkaline earth metals requires much less energy than that in the case of alkali metals. Now we move on to a different uh, physical property which is new to you that is hydration enthalpy. What do you mean by hydration enthalpy? From the words uh, mentioned here, hydration and enthalpy, we can uh, make out that it has something to do with water and energy. Enthalpy means energy. Hydration, uh, it points to water. So, it has something to do with water and energy. So, what is hydration enthalpy? It is the amount of enthalpy released when one mole of gaseous ions combines with water to form hydrated ions. What is hydration enthalpy? It is the amount of enthalpy or it is the amount of energy released when one mole of gaseous ions combine with water to form hydrated ions. Since a smaller gaseous ion combines with more number of water molecules, the smaller gaseous ion releases more amount of energy. In short, smaller the size of the ion, more highly it is hydrated. That is why hydration enthalpy of a smaller gaseous ion is very high. See, in alkali metals, hydration enthalpy decreases with increase in the ionic radii as we move down the group from lithium ion to cesium ion. See, lithium ion has the smallest size, so it has maximum degree of hydration. Due to its smaller size, lithium combines with more uh, number of water molecules. So, uh, uh, during the process, it releases more amount of en uh, energy. Okay, hydration enthalpy of lithium ion when it combines with water molecules will be very high. So, lithium has the maximum degree of hydration and cesium which is the biggest ion among the alkali metals uh, would exhibit the minimum degree of hydration because being uh, bigger in size, cesium would combine with lesser number of water molecules. So, when cesium combines with lesser number of water molecules, it would release a relatively lesser amount of enthalpy. Okay, that is why uh, cesium ion has minimum degree of hydration and the hydration enthalpy of cesium would be the minimum. Okay, since lithium ion has the maximum degree of hydration, lithium salts are mostly hydrated. For example, lithium chloride dihydrate, lithium carbonate trihydrate and so on. Now moving on to the hydration enthalpy in alkaline earth metals. In alkaline earth metals, hydration enthalpy decreases with increase in the ionic radii as we move down the group. So, uh, can you guess which among these ions uh, uh, would exhibit maximum degree of hydration? Beryllium ion. Beryllium ion has the maximum degree of hydration due to its smaller size. Beryllium is the smallest ion among all the other alkaline, alkaline earth metal ions. So, uh, beryllium would exhibit the maximum degree of hydration. Okay, note that the hydration enthalpies of alkaline earth metal ions are larger than those of alkali metal ions because uh, alkaline earth metal ions are relatively smaller in size when compared to alkali metal ions. Consequently, the compounds of alkaline earth metals are very much hydrated than those of the alkali metals. For example, magnesium chloride and calcium chloride exist as magnesium chloride hexahydrate and calcium chloride hexahydrate, while sodium chloride and potassium chloride, which are the compounds formed by alkali metal sodium and potassium, they do not form such hydrates. Okay. Now, let us move on to physical properties and let us learn about these properties by comparing alkali and alkaline earth metals. Alkali metals are silvery white in appearance. Alkaline earth metals are also silvery white but they are lustrous in appearance. They are more shiny. Beryllium and magnesium are grayish in appearance. Alkali metals are soft and light metals. Alkaline earth metals are relatively soft but harder than alkali metals. Okay, alkali metals have low density and their densities increase down the group from lithium to cesium. 
However, potassium, which is the third alkali metal, is lighter than sodium, which is the second alkali metal. It should have been the opposite, right? But uh, it's not so. Potassium is lighter than sodium. If you look at alkaline earth metals, they are denser than alkali metals due to their smaller size. The melting and boiling points of alkali metals are very low. This is because we know uh, alkali metals have only one electron in their valence shell. As a result, they exhibit weak metallic bonding in them. Due to weak metallic bonding, alkali metals possess very low melting and boiling points. Now what about alkaline earth metals? The melting and boiling points of alkaline earth metals are higher than the corresponding alkali metals in each period due to the relatively smaller sizes of alkaline earth metals. Clear? Note that the melting and boiling points of alkali metals decrease gradually with increase in atomic number. That is, on moving down the group, we find that the melting and boiling points of alkali metals decrease. Okay, but the trend is not regular on moving down the group of alkaline earth metals. Now, let us uh, learn about the electropositive or metallic character of alkali and alkaline earth metals. Since the ionization enthalpies of alkali metals are the lowest in any period of the periodic table, they are the most electropositive or metallic in nature. Clear? Now, because of the low ionization enthalpies, alkaline earth metals also uh, are strongly electropositive in nature. The electropositive character increases down the group from beryllium to barium. Because as we move down the group, ionization enthalpy decreases further. As a result, electropositive character increases when we move down the group from beryllium to barium. However, alkaline earth metals are less electropositive or metallic in character than alkali metals due to the relatively smaller size and slightly greater ionization enthalpies of alkaline earth metals when compared to those of alkali metals. Okay, alkaline earth metals are less electropositive or metallic in character when you compare them with the alkali metals in each period. The specific color imparted by an alkali or an alkaline earth metal or any of their salts to the oxidizing flame plays a very important role in the detection of alkali and alkaline earth metals. So let's learn how uh, color is imparted by alkali metals to the flame when you heat them. All the alkali metals and their salts impart characteristic color to an oxidizing flame when you heat them. So on heating an alkali metal or its salt in a flame, the single valence S electron corresponding to the alkali metal or its salt would absorb the heat energy from the flame. Okay, that is the first step. The electron would firstly absorb the heat energy from the flame. Using this heat energy, the electron would easily get excited from its ground state to a higher energy level. Okay, the electron will not stay uh, for a long time in this excited state. It would eventually return to its ground state. So when the excited electron returns to the ground state, it would emit the extra energy gained by it during excitation from flame uh, in the form of visible light. Okay, that is how the flame gets its characteristic color. Okay, this is about the flame test. So, uh, alkali metals can be detected by their respective flame tests. They can also be determined by flame photometry or atomic absorption spectroscopy, which is uh, written in short as AAS. Now, what about alkaline earth metals? Alkaline earth metals and their salts also impart characteristic color to an oxidizing flame. The explanation is the same. Uh, on heating an alkaline earth metal or its salt in a flame, the two valence electrons, okay, uh, since this is an alkaline earth metal, there are two valence S electrons. So these two valence electrons corresponding to the alkaline earth metal or its salt would absorb the heat energy from the flame. Okay, the electrons would use this heat energy which they have uh, gained from the flame and get excited easily from their ground state to a higher energy level. Okay, when the excited electrons come back to the ground state, the absorbed energy is emitted in the form of a visible light of a particular wavelength. And that is how uh, alkaline earth metals impart characteristic color to the flame. Okay, 
Uh, now, the flame test for calcium, strontium and barium is helpful in their detection in qualitative analysis. They can also be estimated by flame photometry. When heated, lithium produces crimson red colored flame, sodium produces yellow flame, potassium produces violet flame, rubidium produces red violet flame and cesium produces blue flame. Due to low ionization enthalpies, alkali metals, especially potassium and cesium, eject electrons when exposed to light. Okay, when you expose potassium and cesium to light, atoms of these elements absorb light energy and uh, eject their electrons out. Okay, they lose electrons. This property makes potassium and cesium useful as electrodes in photoelectric cells. Okay, now moving on to alkaline earth metals. Calcium when heated produces brick red flame, strontium produces crimson red colored flame and barium produces the characteristic apple green colored flame. Note that beryllium and magnesium do not give any color to the flame. Okay, take this into your mind, beryllium and magnesium, they do not give any color when you uh, heat them. Okay. Explanation is, their atoms are very smaller in size and hence their electrons are strongly held by the attractive force of the nucleus. So, they need large amounts of energy for excitation of electrons to higher energy levels, which is not available in the Bunsen flame. For this reason, they do not impart color to the flame. Clear? So, uh, when you are heating beryllium and magnesium in the Bunsen flame, uh, it does not supply that much amount of energy which is required for exciting the electrons in these atoms that is beryllium and magnesium to higher energy levels. Okay, so they do not impart color to the flame. Now alkaline earth metals have high electric and thermal conductivities. Shall we compare and learn the chemical properties of alkali metals and alkaline earth metals? All the alkali metals are highly reactive elements. Why? This is because they have a strong tendency to lose the single valence S electron to form unipositive ions having inert gas configuration. Remember, when an alkali metal loses its outermost electron, it achieves the stable octet configuration of the nearest noble gas. Now, the reactivity of alkali metals arises due to their low ionization enthalpies and large sizes. The reactivity of these metals increases down the group. This is because as we move down a group, size of atoms increase. So it becomes easier to remove the loosely held outermost electron by spending very less amount of energy. Okay, now alkaline earth metals are less reactive than the alkali metals. Why? This is because they are relatively smaller in size than the corresponding alkali metals in each period. Due to the relatively smaller size of these atoms, slightly more amount of energy is required to remove the loosely bound outermost electrons in alkaline earth metals. Now, the reactivity of these metals increases down the group. Explanation is the same. This is because as we move down a group, size of atoms increase, so it becomes easier to remove the loosely held outermost electrons by spending very less amount of energy. Mm -hmm. Now let us look at the reactivity of alkali metals towards air. Alkali metals tarnish in air due to the formation of oxides on their surface, which in turn react with moisture to form hydroxides. Okay. Alkali metals burn vigorously in oxygen forming oxides. Okay, the oxides can be monoxides, peroxides and superoxides. Okay, lithium forms monoxide. See, lithium reacts with oxygen and forms lithium oxide which is a monoxide. Now, let us look at the reactivity of alkaline earth metals towards air. Alkaline earth metals are less electropositive than alkali metals. So, they react with air or oxygen slowly and that too when you heat it to form their metal oxides. Beryllium and magnesium are kinetically inert to oxygen due to the formation of an oxide film on their surface. 
but powdered beryllium burns brilliantly when you ignite it in air to give beryllium oxide and beryllium nitride. We know that lithium which is the first member of group 1 alkali metals forms its monoxide by reacting directly with oxygen. Sodium forms its peroxide by reacting with oxygen. See, sodium reacts with oxygen of air to form sodium peroxide. Other alkali metals form superoxide. See, a metal reacts with oxygen to form its superoxide of the general formula MO2. Uh, here, M stands for potassium, rubidium or cesium. Note that the superoxide ion that is O2 minus ion is stable only in the presence of large cations of potassium, rubidium or cesium. That is why we find that only potassium, rubidium and cesium form their superoxides. Clear? Uh, now in all these oxides whether it is monoxide or peroxide or superoxide the oxidation state of the alkali metal is plus one. Now Lithium, which is the first member of group 1, shows exceptional behavior. Okay, lithium not only reacts with oxygen of air to form its monoxide, that is lithium oxide, it also reacts with nitrogen of air uh, when heated to form its nitride, that is lithium nitride of the formula Li3N. Now, uh, moving on to the reactivity of alkaline earth metals with air. We have learned that the electropositive nature of uh, elements increases down the group. So, we find that magnesium is more electropositive than beryllium and so it burns with dazzling brilliance in air to give magnesium oxide and magnesium nitride. Okay, similarly calcium, strontium and barium. They are even more electropositive than magnesium and so they are readily attacked by air to form their respective oxides and nitrides. So on moving down the group, alkaline earth metals show more reactivity towards air. Okay, now let us look at the reactivity of alkali and alkaline earth metals towards water. This is a very important chemical property. See, in alkali metals, Okay, all alkali metals except lithium, they react with water explosively to form their hydroxides and dihydrogen. Now, if you look at alkaline earth metals, they react with water vigorously even in cold condition to form hydroxides as products. An alkali metal reacts with water explosively to form its unipositive metal cation, its hydroxide and dihydrogen. Here, M is an alkali metal. Note that though lithium has most negative electrode potential value, that is E0 value of minus 3.04 volt, its reaction with water is less vigorous than that of sodium, which has the least negative electrode potential value of minus 2.714 volt. Okay, so let me ask you this question, students. Which among these two values is most negative? minus 3.04 volt okay this value is most negative okay now what do you understand from this e naught value e naught stands for standard electrode potential value and what is the information that you gain from this value speaking in this context it tells you about the reducing power of the alkali metals lower the value of e naught stronger would be the reducing power of the alkali metals if that is so, then lithium, which has the most negative electrode potential value, uh, that is a minus 3.04 volt, should be the strongest reducing agent. Okay, lithium generally reacts with water and reduces it to lithium hydroxide and hydrogen. We expect lithium to react more vigorously with water than sodium which has the least negative electrode potential value of minus 2.714 volt. But on the contrary, we find that lithium reacts less vigorously with water than sodium. This is due to the small size, high ionization enthalpy and high hydration enthalpy of lithium. Now, one more point to be noted here is 
that alkali metals react with proton donors such as alcohol ammonia and alkynes and liberate dihydrogen because of their high reactivity towards air and water alkali metals are normally kept in kerosene oil now look at alkaline earth metals remember uh, i told you that beryllium and magnesium are kinetically inert to oxygen when i explained you about the reactivity of alkaline earth metals towards oxygen okay now we learn here that beryllium and magnesium are kinetic uh, kinetically inert to water also and this is also due to the formation of an oxide film on their surface because of their high reactivity towards air and water calcium barium and strontium okay uh, they are stored in paraffin but beryllium and magnesium are not stored in paraffin this is because they form a protective layer of oxide on their surface now look at the reactivity of alkali metals towards hydrogen alkali metals react with hydrogen at about 673 kelvin to form ionic hydrides of the general formula mh with high melting points okay this uh, chemical equation represents the reaction now uh, in the case of lithium this reaction takes place at uh, still elevated temperatures that is at about 1073 kelvin okay now look at the reactivity of alkaline earth metals towards hydrogen all alkaline earth metals except beryllium combine with hydrogen on heating to form their metal hydrides of the general formula mh2 okay so uh, note that here uh, when alkali metals reacted with hydrogen they form ionic hydrides of the general formula mh and while alkaline earth metals reacted with hydrogen they form their uh, metal hydrides of the general formula mh2 note that beryllium hydride can be prepared by the reaction of beryllium chloride with lithium aluminium hydride see beryllium chloride reacts with lithium aluminium hydride leading to the formation of beryllium hydride along with small quantities of by products which are lithium chloride and aluminium chloride now we will look at the reactivity of alkali metals towards halogens alkali metals readily react vigorously with halogens to form their ionic metallic halides of the general formula mx where m stands for uh, alkali metal and x stands for halogens note that lithium halides are somewhat covalent in nature this is due to the high polarizing capability of lithium ion also lithium ion is very small in size and it has high tendency to distort the electron cloud around the negative halide ion this distortion of the electron cloud of the halide ion by the attraction of lithium ion which is the cation is known as polarization the covalent character of the ionic uh, compound increases with increase in polarization you would have learnt about these when you studied fajan's rules in chapter 4 chemical bonding the second point that is to be noted here is lithium iodide is most covalent you would have learnt in fajan's rules according to fajan's rules the covalent character of ionic compound increases with small size of the cation and large size of the anion since iodide ion has the largest size among all the halide ions and lithium is the smallest cation among group 1 metals lithium iodide is most covalent lithium ion being very small in size uh it greatly distorts the electron cloud al- around the large uh, iodide ion hence the extent of polarization is very high and for this reason lithium iodide is most covalent now let us look at the reactivity of alkaline earth metals towards halogens all the alkaline earth metals react with halogen at elevated temperatures forming their halides of the general formula mx2 Here M stands for alkaline earth metal and X stands for halogen. Note that um, we can easily prepare beryllium fluoride by thermal decomposition of ammonium tetrafluoroberylate. Beryllium chloride can be conveniently prepared by heating beryllium oxide with chlorine in the presence of carbon. Clear? 
reactivity of alkaline earth metals towards acids alkaline earth metals react readily with acids liberating hydrogen gas see when an alkaline earth metal reacts with hydrochloric acid it forms a uh, metal chloride and dihydrogen gas now let us look at an important chemical property exhibited by alkali and alkaline earth metals solutions in liquid ammonia alkali metals dissolve in liquid ammonia to give deep blue solutions which are conducting in nature these solutions contain ammoniated cations and ammoniated electrons when light falls on these ammoniated electrons they get excited to higher energy levels by absorbing energy corresponding to red region of the visible light as a result the transmitted light is blue which imparts blue color to the solution so uh, this is why um, solutions of alkali metals in liquid ammonia uh, get blue color now look at the solutions uh, formed by alkali earth metals in liquid ammonia they also dissolve alkali earth metals also dissolve in liquid ammonia to give deep blue black solutions forming ammoniated ions see uh, their solutions also contain ammoniated cations and ammoniated electrons and it is possible to recover the ammoniates uh, from these solutions note that the solutions of alkali metals in liquid ammonia are paramagnetic on standing that is on keeping these solutions for a long time these blue solutions slowly lose their color and liberate hydrogen resulting in the formation of their respective metal amide nh2 stands for amide group okay here am the subscript am this denotes solution in ammonia with increase in concentrations the blue color changes to bronze and the solution becomes diamagnetic so what will happen if you increase the concentration of the solution if you increase the concentrations the blue color of the solution would change to bronze and the solution which was previously paramagnetic would now become diamagnetic in nature now let us look at the reducing nature of alkali and alkaline earth metals alkali metals are strong reducing agents and this is indicated by their e not values what do you mean by the symbol e not it denotes the standard electrode potential values okay it tells you about the reducing nature of the alkaline uh, alkali metals speaking in this context okay lower the value of e not uh, stronger would be the reducing nature of the alkali metal now if you look at uh, the reducing nature of alkaline earth metals they are also good reducing agent which is indicated by their uh, low values of e not but their reducing power is less than those of their corresponding alkali metals in each period the standard electrode potential value that is e not value which measures the reducing power of the alkali metals depends on the sublimation enthalpy ionization enthalpy and hydration enthalpy of the alkali metal you would have learnt about these in the chapter on thermodynamics here m represents alkali metal the various enthalpy changes undergone by the alkali metal is indicated by the chemical equations display note that lithium is the most powerful reducing agent in spite of its high ionization enthalpy what do you mean by ionization enthalpy it is a measure of the tendency of an atom to lose electrons in the gaseous state so lower the ionization enthalpy value greater would be the tendency of the atom to lose its electrons and hence stronger would be the reducing character of the atom but if that is so since lithium has high ionization enthalpy it does not easily tend to lose its valence electron so we expect lithium to exhibit very poor reducing character but see lithium is the most powerful reducing agent this is because lithium has the smallest ionic size among alkali metals since lithium has the smallest ionic size among alkali metals its enthalpy of hydration is the highest 
uh, also lithium has the most negative standard electrode potential value that is e naught value which is uh, found to be minus 3.04 volt and hence lithium is the strongest reducing agent in the aqueous solution note that sodium is the least powerful reducing agent now look at the reducing nature of alkaline earth metals note that Although beryllium has less negative standard electrode potential value that is E0 value when compared to other metals of group 2, it exhibits some reducing character. This is due to its large hydration enthalpy. Why beryllium has high uh, hydration enthalpy? Since it has the smallest ionic size among alkaline earth metals, beryllium has the highest enthalpy of hydration. The reducing nature of beryllium is also due to the relatively large value of atomization enthalpy of beryllium. Okay, now what do you mean by enthalpy of atomization? You would have learnt about this in uh, the chapter on thermodynamics. Enthalpy of atomization is the enthalpy change or the energy change involved when one mole of a given substance dissociates into gaseous atoms. Okay. Uh, we find that uh, the value of atomization enthalpy of beryllium is very high when compared to uh, other elements. That is why it has uh, or it exhibits some reducing character. Shall we look at the several uses of alkali and alkaline earth metals? Let us first look at the various uses of lithium which is an alkali metal. Lithium is used to make several useful alloys. For example, lithium is used along with lead to make white metal bearings for motor engines. It is used along with aluminium to make aircraft parts. Lithium is used along with magnesium to make armor plates. Lithium is used in thermonuclear reactions and it is also used to make electrochemical cells. Moving on to the various uses of sodium which is an alkali metal. It is used to make a sodium lead alloy needed to make tetraethyl lead and tetramethyl lead. These are important compounds. What are these compounds? These are called organo lead compounds. In earlier days, these compounds were used as anti knock additives to petrol. Now, what do you mean by an anti knocking agent? It is an additive which is added in very small quantities to petrol in order to reduce the knocking sound that is destructive to the petrol engine but nowadays vehicles use lead free petrol liquid sodium metal is used as a coolant to fast breeder nuclear reactors now shall we look at the various uses of beryllium which is an alkaline earth metal beryllium is also used to make several alloys copper beryllium alloys are used in the preparation of high strength springs metallic beryllium is used for making windows of x-ray tubes Okay, now these are the various uses of magnesium. Magnesium forms alloys with metals like aluminium, zinc, manganese and tin. Magnesium aluminium alloys being light in mass are used in aircraft construction. Magnesium both in powder and ribbon forms is used in flash powders and bulbs, incendiary bombs and signals. Now what do you mean by a flash bulb? Students, many of you would have taken photographs in studios. When the photographer pressed a button, you would have noticed a quick flash of light and with that it means that he has taken a picture or photograph of yours. This flash of light is produced by means of a flash bulb. Flash bulbs are used in photography. It is nothing but a glass bulb filled with finely shredded magnesium that is ignited by electricity to produce a short duration high intensity light flash for taking photographs also called photo flash. Okay, so magnesium is useful in the making of flash bulbs. It is also used to make incendiary bombs and signals. These are used to set fires to objects. Okay. Now, a suspension of magnesium hydroxide in water called milk of magnesia is used as an antacid in medicine. This is an important use of magnesium. Magnesium carbonate is an ingredient of toothpaste. Moving on to the various uses of potassium which is an alkali metal. Potassium has an important role to play in biological systems. Potassium chloride is used as a fertilizer. 
Potassium hydroxide is used in the manufacture of soft soap and it is also used as an excellent absorbent of carbon dioxide. Now cesium is used in constructing photoelectric cells. Now shall we look at the various uses of uh, the remaining uh, metals, alkaline earth metals, calcium and radium. Calcium is used in the extraction of metals from oxides which are difficult to reduce with carbon. Calcium and barium metals are used to remove air from vacuum tubes due to their reactivity with oxygen and nitrogen at elevated temperatures. Now, radium salts are used in radiotherapy that is in the treatment of cancer. So, with this, I wind up my first video on Chapter 10, S-Block Elements. In the next video, I will teach you about the general characteristics of the compounds formed by alkali and alkaline earth metals and about the anomalous behavior exhibited by the first members of group 1 and group 2. Thank you for watching.